Hello everyone, now let's start configuring the firmware of the Veron 0.2 suite, the suite mainly uses Cheetah 3.0 motherboard and display panel of Veron V0 and we assemble the structure correctly and after wiring according to the wiring diagram then you need to put the motherboard ID and display ID configure to Clipper, that is our Raspberry Pi or other similar host computer to use the printer under normal circumstances when our kit leaves the factory the corresponding clipper firmware has been installed just fill in the id to clipper it is printer cfg file it fails to connect or prompts mcu the firmware version is too low we may have to update the firmware at this time and configure the id before we start powering up make sure your wiring is correct in particular, the positive and negative poles cannot be reversed. If it is reversed, it will cause the hardware to burn. Then, there is no way to continue. If you have a multimeter, it is recommended to measure all positive and negative inputs. See if there is a short circuit. If there is no short circuit, let's power up the machine again. Well, our tutorial is on Github. Including our configuration file, also on Github. We randomly included a DF card with this in it, the installed Clipper system. If you are using Raspberry Pi, just plug it in and wire it up. And our system can work, and our config file is containing in this system. If you want to reinstall the system, or you are not using Raspberry Pi, then you can come to our Ithub. Download the corresponding configuration file, it's here. Then we currently have two versions, 0.2, if you are using Cheetah motherboard, and it is this file. Once the file is downloaded, I'm going to place it in the, this machine. Below the config files, is above this position, we can take a look. Open this file, we have already written in this document. Example you can see here, it uses a motherboard, 446, and it has this feist on it, some characters of Cheetah 3.0, then this means that it is the configuration file of Cheetah 3.0, if you don't see these things, then it has error. And let's proceed now, configure the firmware, we just saw this place, actually it is wrong, can't even say now, that's because of our ID, it is incorrect, what is this ID? Each motherboard has a unique ID. Then we need according to our motherboard. Let's configure. What about our Raspberry Pi after installing the system? You have to go through your router, get his IP address, and we log into the Raspberry Pi via sh I have found his IP here is 0 0.124. And our Raspberry Pi login name, generally, is Pi. Password is shumapi. Then I am here because I remembered the password, though there is no need to type. After we come in, first enter a command. List all our USB devices. Let's take a look. We can see that there are two devices in this place, but one is STM32F446, this STM32F042, then 446, our motherboard. 042 is our display screen. Let's see what its IDs are. Ah, oh, this is one of his paths. We got the two IDs. Then the 042 in front is our display screen, and the 446 at the back is our motherboard. Let's copy the ID of this motherboard. If you are using the same one as I am, this is called the words of this software of Mobaxter. In fact, after you select it, it has been copied just to be on the safe side. You can also press CTRL and C to copy. OK, we come in. We in this configuration file, we paste it in. OK, let's take a look. Confirm 3820 to see if it is pasted correctly. And let's paste the ID of the display. Display ID, it's in the back. 
We find the display part. You can quickly search. You can see, this place shows V0 display, then we glue it over. OK 3720 let's check, 3720 is not wrong. Then we save and restart. Wait a minute. Then we see that it has been shown here. STM32F446 and F042. Let's go to dashboard to have a look. Here we have seen, we've got the temperature. If you wired it correctly, then we can get the temperature, such information. Let's reset it now. OK, then when the icon turns blue and no error is reported and the reset is successful, then this time shows our temperature and our motor and what about our limit switches, everything is normal, then we check the heating function again. The heating function is here, then we first heat it up, be heated above 170 degrees, then we form an extrusion operation, see if it can be extruded. We heated him to 200 degrees. We see that the temperature is already rising. Curve changes indicates that the heating function is also normal. We also turn the heat bed up to 60 degrees. The temperature of the hot bed is also rising indicates that the heating function is also normal. We wait for it to heat up to our target temperature. We are waiting. Let's see if our display is normal. Let's take a look. The display is OK. That means there is no problem with the configuration of the display screen. Basically our machine should be fine. We just need to wait for it to heat up and do the extrusion. Then you can perform a print operation. The temperature has basically reached the target temperature. Let's do a basic operation for him. Then we can just click extrude here. If you click and find that he doesn't squeeze out, you can click again. Sometimes your materials may not be fully included. Okay, we can see that the material has been squeezed out. That means the machine, basically no problem. Well, our firmware configuration is over here.